Hi there, Mike here from Haven of Code. Sorry, it's been a while, been a bit busy with musical related things of my own, uh, but coming back here to continue our Logic Pro 9 tutorial series. Uh, and I see um, since I've been back to the page, the subscriber list has jumped a bit, so it's always nice to see. And uh, Dan informs me that we can now upload videos um, that are longer than 15 minutes, which is cool, I, I don't know why, uh, Just YouTube just emailed us the other day and said that we were able to do so. So anyway, on to today's video. The first brief thing to talk about is these uh, parameters down here, and uh, they will change the resolution of your page. So if uh, I go down to this parameter here and uh, move up, this will make my track header smaller and this is handy if you want to save space on your page so I'm just clicking and dragging up similarly if I drag down it will make it bigger so this is handy if you just want to focus on one particular track within your session the next thing I want to talk about is this little symbol up here and uh, this will change the way that the timeline across the top actually works for you within your logic session so if I click this musical note symbol, you can see that right now it's set to bar with a tick next to it. Um, and we can change it to bar and time. So this will add time as in uh, minutes to our session. This is handy obviously if you're working in TV or film. The last useful thing we can do with this drop down menu is change it to time and bar and obviously this has the converse effect as if we were to choose bar and time up here. Another really important thing to understand when you're working with logic is a thing called snap and snap basically is how logic will behave when you move any region whether it be audio or MIDI around your grid. Uh, and you can change the snap mode to change how Logic behaves and moves audio or MIDI around your grid. So if we go up to the right hand side of the page, you'll see we've got this snap drop down menu and I clicked on it and we came up with loads of different modes that we can actually use within Logic. You'll see if I get rid of that menu that we are currently set to smart and this basically means that when I move this region around, Logic will try to guess what mathematics I wanted to use um, to move this region around based on how I click and drag the region. I wouldn't recommend this for beginners just because it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, it confused the hell out of me. I didn't know, um, you know what, what uh, smart was and I just had to kind of learn on my own. So we're going to go back up here and uh, I'm just going to focus on a couple modes today because, as you see, there are quite a few and uh, some of these towards the bottom are really only relevant if you're working heavily with video. So if I change, you'll see that the region is right at the start of our song, so right at the start of our first bar to start with. And if I change it to bar, it means that when I click and drag, it will go from the start of the first bar, if I drag it, to the start of the second so that's useful, obviously, if you had a, a whole project and, uh, you know, like the, the whole thing just started a bar too early, you can drag it to the right place. If I drag it back by a bar, so it starts at bar one, then I can change the snap mode. And as you'll see, the region in question will move in relation to beats rather than bars when we change our snap mode. Now, these are the only two modes I really want to talk about today um, because uh, all, a lot of the others are a bit more advanced. Moving on to um, the audio portion of our tutorial, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about what this is. Now, uh, an Apple loop is basically a sample that has been uh, sampled quite obviously and you can use this feature here so if I just go to the end of the region the far end that is and click and hold you'll see that 
another copy of this, the uh, loop is printed and if I go back to our transport bar which I covered in a previous video and skip back to the beginning and hit the space bar to play you'll hear that we had a continuous transition so it actually sounds like a real drummer is playing that beat uh, and we didn't have any kind of lag between the samples because they loop. Now these loops are completely royalty three you can use them on any kind of commercial projects and make money from them and Apple aren't going to get annoyed uh, obviously because they incorporate the loops with the price of the software. Another useful place you can go to acquire loops that aren't included with Logic is loopmasters.com uh, and they have everything there from dance to rock loops. I must say that the, the onus is, is probably on producing dance music and stuff with, with loops so that it's very heavy on that sort of stuff but it's worth checking it out. It's a relatively inexpensive way to acquire more loops. Another really cool thing about Apple Loops is they slave to the tempo of your project. So what I can do is go down to this display down here uh, where, I, where I've got my tempo, click in that box and you can use the numbers on your keyboard to tap in or type in rather a specific tempo. So let's say I want to change it to, let's go drastic, let's change it to 100 BPM hit enter and if I use the transport controls to go back hit play you can hear that it's slowed down uh, and just to make my point let's go back to 130 hit enter so you can hear it's completely in sync with the tempo of your project which is really useful. One final thing to note here is uh, if I go down and grab a different loop that's a completely different tempo to my session which is currently 130 as we changed yeah, let's, let's, let's go like to 110 if I drag that over you'll see that it comes up with a message and it says do you want to import tempo information so the loop actually has tempo information embedded within it which is how it's able to slave to the tempo of the project and I'm going to hit yes and you'll see that the tempo down there changed to the specific tempo that uh, the loop needed the project to be uh, and it's a bit more precise than you get in the media um, viewer as you see it's just Logic just kind of rounds it up to 110 over here, but uh, you, you can actually see in the tempo display it's got 109.9773, which is a lot more precise, obviously. So that's cool as well. Um, that about wraps us up. Um, another kind of basic video for you. Um, but I just wanted to get it out there just as I saw that our subscribers have jumped up a bit so uh, just give them something to to enjoy um, we will get to some more advanced videos for everybody that wants them um, but just keep following us keep supporting us uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already if you've got any questions please chuck me a comment I'll be more than happy to uh, to reply and try and help you out uh, and until next time I'm Mike from Haven of Code thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.